Greg Dumas. Amen. Can we thank the Lord today? Come on, let's do it. Let's thank him. Let's welcome South Shore, Plant City. What's happening? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can we continue to put our hands together for the Benevolence Christmas Coffee? That was fantastic. God is good. Delighted to be back with you. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. We ask that we would be changed from the inside out. And all of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I could have said all of Jesus' people. You would have said the same thing. Amen. <laughs> Delighted to be with you. We're starting a brand new series this month in uh, uh, December. It's called Waymaker. Waymaker. And we're talking about the angelic promises, the announcements that came to foretell the coming of Jesus, and then the fulfillment of what Christ did to fulfill Old Testament prophecies together, 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 together. There's a popular song. I'll give you a little backstory for the reference point of the series. Waymaker has become an anthem this year. You know the song that I'm talking about? For believers in America and around the globe. The song made its way to the States from Nigeria with the singer-songwriter, Pentecostal worship leader, Osanichi Kalu Akoro Egbu. <laughs> Say that a couple times over lunch. Uh, known as Sinak, uh, also recorded it in 2015. So she recorded it, and then it was popular, pop, popularized here in America um, on the top spot of the 100 song of the Christian copyright, CCO licensing for play in churches. Now check this out. Uh, in April, the song claimed two top spots simultaneously on the Billboard Hot Christian Song list when Michael W. Smith and the band Leland, uh, uh, Google Leland, the band Leland and Waymaker, that's the great version right there, and both of them were number one. It's never happened like that on the billboards before. It also uh, was, uh, I'm going to get my thoughts together here in one second, I promise. <laughs> Performances uh, of Waymaker by Mandisa and Passion also took spots 39 and 40 on the same chart. And then Sinak uh, became the first African-American artist to rise to the top of the Billboard Christian Songwriters chart for the very first time in history. Can we praise God for that? Okay. Jesus, help me. The chorus in the song is awesome and it's theologically correct. He is our, if you know it, he is our way maker. He's our miracle worker. He's our promise keeper. He's our light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. And, and, and the, so with the refrain, I'm a terrible singer, that's all you get today, okay? <laughs> God bless you, love you. Um, it goes on and it says, he makes a way. He continues to make a way, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it. God made a way in history, God's making a way today, and God's going to finish the way in eternity, correct, church? So, I, I, yeah, I don't know about you, but this year has been a year, hasn't it? I mean, this has been a year for the record books, and in my life, four major surgeries over nine months, and um, there were times when I couldn't see the way. Uh, and I know, I love Jesus, amen? I, I love Jesus, but I couldn't see the way. The I, I, only thing I remember is seeing the lights for, on that surgery table over and over. And they said, Mr. Dumas, we're going to count to five. And then they go, five, four, three, two, <laughs> and I'm out. It's been a long year. I, I couldn't, there were moments in time I, I couldn't feel the way. I really couldn't, I really couldn't feel it. And I know for many of you, this year has been just like that. But God... But God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Isaiah 43. Join me in the book of Luke if you've got your Bible with you or if you have a, a form of media that you want to jump in with us. And I want to read the opening section of chapter 1 of the book of Luke here. And I want to give you an orientation for the first announcement from the angel Gabriel. God is crashing in. He's making a way. The Dr. Luke is the author of the book. He's writing to a man named Theophilus. That's the heading. And in verse 5, it starts like this. 
In the time of Herod, king of Judah, he was a tetrarch. That means he was half Roman, half Jewish. He was kind of a political guy. He politicized a lot of things. And so what he did for the Jewish people in the temple, he did really through way of Rome to take care of himself and, and Rome. So that's who he is, Herod. And there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. So there was the high priest in the nation of Israel, and then there were probably 10,000, some say a little bit more than that, 10,000 other priests. They served by division. There's 24 of those divisions. And two times a year for a week, about 100 men in each one of those lots, those 24 lots, would serve for a week. And then very on a special occasion, a lot was cast. These were like die. And one of the 100 would go in for a certain time to serve inside of the temple. That's the backdrop for the story here when we talk about Zechariah. It's exactly what happened. He belonged to the division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. This is the Aaronic priesthood. Very important to know that. Six, uh, note this in your Bible. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all of the Lord's commands and regulations blamelessly. In other words, they love the Lord, and they, they knew the letter of the law, but they also love God with their whole hearts. Right, church? They love God on the inside. But, verse 7, there always have to be a but somewhere, right? There's, there's the good kind, there's the bad kind. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years. This would have carried a lot of social stigma, a lot of disgrace, because it was thought that if you were barren, that it was a sign curse that God had. So the sign was the absence of children, and it was a curse that God had left you. We do not believe that to be true, do we, church? We, we, we don't believe that to be true. But culturally, in this time, that's what it meant. So they had done very well. There was status with Zechariah, but there was a lot of suffering that was going on as well. There was a lot of societal uh, sort of disgrace that took place. And that's the backdrop for the good news of the gospel, for the good news of the gospel. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, he was serving uh, as priest before God, and he was chosen by lot. They cast it. He got to go in, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord to burn incense. And when the time of the burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. The incense, remember, how many of you, how many of you are formerly Catholic or are or something? How many? Raise your hands. I'd, lo I'd love to see it. We, uh, we think it's about a third of the church. Raise your hand. Don't, come on, Catholics, where are you? There you go. You're like, maybe I was. I don't know. Am I? <laughs> about a third of the church, about a third of all of our population, lots and lots of people on the stream um, are or were formerly Catholic and so on. You remember the incense, right? The incense was supposed to be a symbol so that the people on the outside would see the, the incense burning on the inside and they would be able to see, as it were, their prayers going up to heaven. That's what the symbol of the incense was for. I'm praying and I can see that incense going up and now I'm imagining that my prayers are going up to the Lord and we know that they do. We know that they do. Eleven. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. Most of the time, we reserve the right to name our children. Correct? Unless an angel shows up on Monday and says, His name is John. You cannot call him Billy. Billy. The, the, the name John means the Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious to you, Elizabeth. The Lord is gracious to you, John. You, you've been barren. 14. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He's never to take wine or other fermented drink. That means he's to take the Nazarite vow. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Now, that's a big deal. Because remember, Jesus hasn't come to the earth when he comes to the earth, he lives, he dies, he's resurrected, and then the coming of the Holy Spirit. So John, the baptizer, this baby, is going to be the first person in the New Testament to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but it's even before the book of Acts. He's baptized in the womb. What? 16. Many of the, uh, many of the people of Israel he will bring back to the Lord your God. 
And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah, a very powerful Old Testament prophet, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That is an Old Testament prophecy. It's a today prophecy, and it's an end-of-the-world prophecy. That the fathers, the hearts of the fathers, would be turned to their children again. Some sociologists say that 95% of all societal and sociological problems stem from fatherlessness. Whew. Baby. 18. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? Now, I want you to know that God's okay when we question. When God shows up, God's okay. Everybody say question. question. He's okay with that. I, how do I know? Am I, is it maybe sure? But God knows the inside of our hearts. And so, Zechariah, you're going to see Elizabeth's response. You're going to see Mary's response later next week. God's okay when we question. But when we doubt and we fall into disbelief, that's when God has to do something a little bit different. And that's what's going on here as you look into the text He's doubting. He's not just asking a question. He's, he, he's missing it. Zechariah is missing it. He asked, how can I be sure of this? I'm a man. I'm an old man. My goodness. Read the Bible. I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. He was only 50 years old, y'all. <laughs> that, that's not old. Can we agree that's not old? Come on. He's 50. It's, it's relative, right? If you're 30, 50, you're a super old person. Or if you're 20, you know, 50, man, you're about to cash it in. <laughs> but if you're 50, 70, looks good. Come on, Jesus. And then he throws his wife under the bus. She's 52, or as well. She's old. I'm old. We can't do it. We, we can't do this. The angel answered, I'm Gabriel. There's only two angels mentioned in the Bible. There are hundreds of uh, thousands, maybe millions and millions of angels, too, are named the archangel Michael, who's the warring angel, and Gabriel, who's the messenger angel. I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. The gospel is good news, isn't it, church? And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens. So nine months of silence. Can you imagine if wives had this veto power? <laughs> It'd be a quiet place, wouldn't it? It'd be quiet. Everybody would be making signs to each other. Hey. Because you did not. Okay, so here's where the, where the scripture reveals it. You did not. Say it with me. You didn't believe my words. So it's not just asking the question or even having a slight doubt. It's having the firm concept that I, I don't, God, I, you can't do that, God. You can't. I, I, don't, I don't believe you. And when we fall into disbelief, we then fall into delay. What God wants to do, God wanted to do this. Everybody say today. today. It was today for him as we read the text. The angel came. Some Sunday at the crossing, while some dude was talking, the Lord started speaking to you, which is today. But today was this day for him, and God is saying to him, you're missing my prophetic alignment for your life by just refusing to believe that I can do it right here, right now. Right here, right now, this very moment, this, this second, right now. And so that disbelief delays us and he did come into a blessing, but it was nine months later when he was able to speak again and, and raise John and all of those things. And, and so when we doubt, when we seriously doubt, it causes us to be locked up and delay. And then you'll see in just a second, not only that, but there's fatherly discipline that comes with that. And I would rather avoid the discipline, wouldn't you? I would, I just, just, I would avoid the discipline. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you, and I to tell you this good news, and now you'll be silent and not able to speak until this day happens because you didn't believe my words, and which will come true in the proper time. 
21. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized that he'd seen a vision in the temple, uh, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. This is where gestures came from, right here. This is where gestures originated. Can you imagine? So nine months, nine months, of you, you're able to speak fine, and then no speaking for nine months. And I want you to see this. Uh, this, this is, when his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion, 25. The reason why she remained in seclusion was because uh, sort of, is it okay if I say it this way, sort of darned if you do, you know the word that I want to use? Yeah. And darned if you don't? So they were barren and judged, and there was a lot of disgrace. And then she conceived, and she was 50, amazingly old. <laughs> and she was judged because there was then financial pressure put on the family, societally. They, they would think that way. And problems could occur with the baby and so on and so forth. So she hid herself for five months until she couldn't hide herself any longer. There's a lot that's going on in the text here. There's a ton of trouble and difficulty and heartache and disgrace and rejection from uh, friends and society. While all of this is going on, this is the backdrop. Now, I want you to see what Elizabeth says in contrast to what Zechariah says. 25, the Lord has done this for me. Come on, that's an amen, right? The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and he has taken away my disgrace from among my people. The Lord has blessed me. Amen? We can clap for that. Come on, let's do it. All right. You guys are wondering why I'm up here nursing this thing. I, it's just a, it's a medication, and I'm trying to get through it, right? In the name of Jesus, thank you, okay? I'd rather be here sipping this and sitting on my couch. <laughs> um, here we go. How not to miss the messenger. How not to miss the messenger. Two things, two broad application pieces. And uh, remember the fact that God will accomplish his will. That's number one. Remember the fact that God will accomplish his will. Remember the fact that God will accomplish his will. He will accomplish. Let's do this this year. Whatever you do this year. As we finish the year, we go into 21. Let's do this, guys, okay? Let's make this the authority of our lives. Let's, let's make this. God will accomplish his word. And he works in mysterious ways. That's the second concept. That's the application. God will accomplish his word, and he works in mysterious ways. All right, here we go. Isaiah 55, 11. So it is that my word goes out from my mouth, and it will not return to me empty or void, God says, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Matthew 5, 17. Don't think that I have come to abolish the law. This is Jesus or the prophets. I've come to, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Come on, can we, can we orient ourselves again? Every person who is here, those of you who are brand new, those of you who have been Christian for 50 years, super old. Okay, you're old, you're 50. Okay, a long, long time. You've been a Christian. Come on, can, can, can we get this today as an orientation? If God said it, that settles it. Come on, so can you, church, listen, can you say it with me as a, you don't have to shout it. I mean, you don't have to, right, right? Even if you're at home, wherever you are, say, if God said it, that settles it. Okay, Genesis to Revelation, everything in here. Every word, every phrase, every story, every miracle is true. If, if, and just try living your life this way. Try living your life this way. If God said it, that settles it. It's done. Malachi 3.1. <clears throat> there are 400 years in your Bible. You've got the book of Matthew. It's the first book of the New Testament. The last book of the Old Testament is Malachi. There is one thin page like this in my Bible that separates Malachi from Matthew. But there's 400 years of history between Malachi and Matthew. God didn't speak for 400 years. He spoke to the minor prophet Malachi, and then he didn't say anything to his people 
for another 400 years. Why? Because he had said everything he could say until he sent his son. He, he had to be silent in that time. And what happens to us is we forget that God's faithful when things take a long time. When it's been a year, or it's been two, or it's been three, or it's been five, or that happened 10 years ago, or God's promise to me is 20 years late. No, 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 no. God is always on time. God is always on time. 400 years had passed. Zechariah knew exactly. Zechariah knew, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Malachi 4, 5 says this, I'll send you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. That's 400 years before Gabriel shows up to speak to Zechariah, 400 years before. All right. Uh, Malachi 4, 5, see, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I already read that. Thank you very much. 2 Peter 3, 8 and 9. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. God doesn't count time the way we count time. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. If we orient ourselves to eternity, then we can live today in expectancy. That the Holy Spirit is going to do what God said he would do, even if it was 400 years ago. God is going to do what he said he's going to do. As some understand slowness, he's patient with you, he's patient with me, and I don't know about you, but I forgive somebody a couple times. Come on, church. And then I feel like, don't do it again. Correct? True? The Bible says 70 times 7. That means we keep forgiving, and aren't you thankful that that's the heart of God? Because God wants us to come into grace into the grace of Jesus, and he forgives us and 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 loves us and loves us. He strove with the Canaanites for 400 years. He strives, he's striving with America. We're 244 years old. Sometimes I talk to college students and they're like, America's been here forever. I'm like, really? We're 244 years old. We're just 244 years old, and what we have can go like that. And disappear. But God will accomplish his word. He wants everyone to come to repentance in him. Now, see the frame and the update in Zechariah's life. Watch this. In Zechariah's life. And John the Baptist, you'll see the scripture, he's not the, he's not the creator of the Baptist denomination. And I, I, don't, I say that tongue in cheek. He's John the baptizer. He's John the baptizer. He's the forerunner. We'll go on before the Lord. Watch this. Here's the application update. We'll go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So the Elijah that was spoken about in Malachi is John in Matthew. We just have to be ready for God to update what he said whenever he said it. Because God can uh, update his word, can he? It doesn't matter how many verses you know if you're not looking for the move of the Spirit of God. Amen. You're, you're, it's, listen, it doesn't matter how many verses you know if you're not primed today for the move of the Spirit of God in your life, we can miss the messenger and the message. Zechariah would have memorized the first five books of the Bible. Every single word he memorized, every priest would have memorized the first, the Pentateuch. Every single word of the first five books of the Bible. That's a lot of Bible memory, right? But he wasn't expecting God to move on a Monday. And I don't know what day it was in the temple, but, I, but, but listen, can God move right now? Woo, yeah. baby. Let's be ready for a prophetic move of God right now. God can move right now. He'll move whether you believe it or not. He'll move whether you feel it or not. He'll move whether you believe it or not. Zechariah said, how can this be? Elizabeth said, Lord, you've done this for me. Come on, you see the difference? Lord, you've done this for me. Whether you feel it or not, check this out. Zechariah was enjoying a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Once-in-a-lifetime. Because your lot would have been called only maybe once-in-a-lifetime. 
Elizabeth was experiencing a lifetime of disappointment. Zechariah missed God. Elizabeth found him. I, I, so I want to I wanna, I wanna help you out for just a second here, okay? Listen, some of you feel like maybe your spouse, your husband, or wife, they get to party. Or maybe your former husband or your former wife. They get the, the interview. They get the job. They get the promotion, and you're over here suffering. But I want you to know, God doesn't look on the outside. God looks on the inside. And people that may feel like they're having the best day of their life. I won the lotto. My lot was cast, the lottery. They can end up missing it. And the person who's suffering, who really is finding Jesus, is ready for a prophetic move of God in their life today. In Jesus' name. Today. Second, we got to remember the fact that he works in mysterious ways. He works in mysterious ways, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's just like God to come through the back door instead of the front door. He doesn't do things in religious ways. He does things in righteous ways. He's not looking for our religious systems and our ways. God chose to fulfill a 400-year-old prophecy through a culturally irrelevant, barren couple well along in years. How often do we impose our views on God and say, God, you have to act the way I think you're going to act. God refuses those notions, and he continues to come in grace and blessing and love and miracles disguised in ordinary clothes. A baby in a manger. Zechariah had religious expectations about how God, how God was supposed to move. We often misplace our expectations. You know, church, God said he's going to move, right? You know, God wants to move, right? If my people who are called by my name, if you know it, say it with me. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and what? And pray and seek my face and turn from their, turn from their wicked ways, then I shall... Come and heal their land. God wants to move, but he has a very difficult time breaking into our religious systems. He has a difficult time breaking in. Think about, think about coming to church. You come to church. When you, when you come to church, I come to church. I come to church, and I'm looking for the seat that I sit in. I'm right, serious. Come on, are you seriously? And if somebody's in your seat, you're like, excuse me, can you move? You're in my seat. <laughs> so then we sing, so we sing the songs, and so we fall into a lull in singing the songs, and we're thinking something about the stage or the worship pastor or what the light looks like or whatever it is. And so we miss the actual incarnation of the song because we're missing Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We're just, we fall into these patterns, right? Yeah. So did Zechariah. Zechariah was having a very special day, but he knew how to be a priest. He knew the word of God. And then there's an angel that says to him, now listen, watch this. Today, you're going to have a son. Wait a minute. You know, we're old. We're barren. You're going to have a soul. No, it's impossible. You're going to have a son. He's going to be the forerunner. He's going to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. He's going to make a way for the king of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus. And he's going to be full of the Holy Ghost before he's out of the womb. That's a big Monday. That's a big Monday. And today is a big Sunday. Today is whatever God wants to say to you. Even if it's more than you can imagine or think. But my God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ask or imagine according to the power that's at work within. The, the, according to the power that's at work within. According to the power that's at work within church. Do you know the verse? According to the power that's at work in you guys are like, I don't know, Jesus? <laughs> According to the power that's at work within you. You have the Holy Ghost in you. That God might get the glory in the church today and forever and forever. If you want a move of God in your life, ditch your expectations. That means ditch your former experience and be open to the invitation of Jesus today. Be open to the invitation. The presence, 
Be open to the presence of the Holy Spirit today. And I'll end like this with a story. Uh, I had a friend of mine who invited me to ride in his Tesla. And it doesn't matter what kind of car you have, whatever. Whatever kind of car you have, that's fine. Okay? He said, uh, do you want to ride in it? It's a Model S. And um, they're very, they're, they're, they're quick. He said, it is very fast, really fast. Now, my reference point, now watch this. I'm talking about Zechariah. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. Because God wants to do something different than you've seen before, right? And the way that I think keeps me from thinking the way God wants me to think. What I have experienced keeps me from experiencing what God wants me to experience next. So my reference point for fast was I had a buddy in high school. He had a 55 Chevy, and it had a 427 Hemi in it. To some of you, that means something. Otherwise, you're like, I don't know. 427 Hemi with a Hurst shifter, and it's a big, rumbly, you know, metal, just massive, had glass pipes on it. So when you got in, it was just like, you know, some of you are like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> and so he would regularly just mass through those things and scratch them off. We would just leave smoke, you know, ah, you couldn't even see the car. This was high school. Yeah. <laughs> on the way to school one morning, uh, he lost it. He goosed it really hard. He lost control of it. It, it was a super fast car, surprisingly fast. We went through a lady's front yard. We went right through her living room, <laughs> literally through her bay window. She was eating breakfast in the kitchen like, I'll never forget it. We were like, she's eating pancakes. Ah. <laughs> True story. True story. So my reference for fast was rumbly and bumbly and loud and a little out of control. Do you hear me? So he says, hop in. He says, it's really fast. He says, it can go 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds. Now, they make a roadster that goes 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, if you could imagine that. So I got in, I, I, uh, I, and, and now listen, here's what God's asking us to do, Zechariah. Here's what God's asking us to do, get in. Because my former experience could have led me to say, I'm not getting in that car. <laughs> I sat in a car, I got in like this, boom, closed the door. And he said, are you, he didn't say ready. He just said, are you? I'm still looking at him. He goes, and I just went whap like this and stuck to the seat. It made no sound. It just grabbed the road like that and went. Yeah. I looked down. We were doing 150 on College Avenue in Ruskin between lights. So. This was me. This, 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 this was me. Here's a picture of me. <laughs> Followed by. <laughs> That's a real feeling. <laughs> That's real. I was just, I hurt myself last night because I acted like I acted when I got out of the car. I was making all kinds of movements. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> craziest thing I've ever been at, craziest thing. Zechariah could have felt like that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Good job, Will. That's kind of fun. And God's invitation for us is to feel like that. We just have to remember, God's going to accomplish his word. And he's going to do it in ways that we don't expect him to do it. He's just going to not, he's not going to come to us the way that we think he's coming or the way that we have the reference point set up religiously or what we remember or what we've experienced and God, come on, would you, would you do this with me? How many of you, don't close your eyes or bow your heads or anything. How many of you want an expectancy to be born in you right this second for God to do something miraculous in your life right now? Just an expectancy. Come on, we can clap that up. Clap it up, clap it up. Amen. 
Okay, let's pray it up now. Let's pray it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Don't close your eyes. Come on, lift your hand. If you want to, you can. Just be in a posture of reception. Whatever your posture, whatever your posture is. Father, we thank you that you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, God, that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ask or imagine. And God, we thank you that it's, if, if, it's, if it's something that's out of the ordinary and we can't even think of it, that's right in your lane. And if you're feeling today like you're just in a place where, man, I don't know if God could ever use my life, then you're a perfect candidate for God to use your life. So, Lord, do what you're going to do in us and through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? We're going to pray a prayer of salvation and ask Christ into our lives. Every, every voice say, Lord Jesus, today's the day. I give you my life. I surrender to you. I know I've made mistakes. <laughs> I give up that sin. I give you my life. In Jesus' name. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you prayed that way today, on the count of three, slip your hands up for us. One, two, three. Raising your hands. Thank you. 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 So many people trust in Christ. Yes, sir. Others. Hold on, hold on. One second, one second, one second. Anybody else? Today, raising your hands. You're just saying, today I'm giving, I'm giving my life. You, you can do it online with us. Do it at our campuses. I'm giving my life to Jesus today. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Amen and amen and amen. Now we can clap and thank God. God bless you. Amen. Woo! Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you for being patient with me as I'm getting back in the flow here. Woo! My goodness. I will, uh, I'll, 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 I'm going to try to stay in regular rotation now. I am feeling better. I had friends uh, help me and get to the right PT, get a different doctor. And so things are really headed in the right direction. I love you. God bless you. You're going to worship for a second. Pastor Wade's going to come close us.